And welcome inside the office of the Athletic Director at the University of Missouri, Mr. Jim Sterk. It is time for Inside the Huddle, our monthly chat with the Tiger AD. And uh, Jim, let's start with basketball because that is rolling here in Como. And uh, Conzo Martin's team turned around a rough stretch. They followed up a three-game losing streak with a five-game winning streak. And how exciting has this been as he has gotten things turned around, not just this season, but overall for the program? Yeah, I think it's it's been great. Um, we've got great momentum in, in that program and all of ours. And um, we were joking, the gym is, uh, the arena is very busy this weekend with state wrestling and, and women's basketball here. And um, so it, it's there's a lot going on. Um, but I think overall with, with men's, it, it's fun to see people really getting excited about Mizzou basketball. And, and Conzo's done a great job, him and his coaches, have, of moving this team forward. And I think we're... Uh, uh, we've made great strides since the start of the season, and they've developed into a great team that you know really plays tough defense, gives people fits, and then play play great team basketball. So it's fun. I want to give you a chance to brag about your your coach's ability to to well, for lack of a better phrase, coach. I mean, there's been attrition on this roster from the very beginning of the season, basically down to a rotation of eight guys, but they keep getting better, as as you mentioned, and as you've observed, Conzo Martin. What what tools does he have? How does he able to get his message across and help make his players better in season? Yeah, I, I think it's you know it starts with him personally. You know that he he doesn't waver from um, what his beliefs are and how he how he should coach and and how to how to treat the young men and and I think he's been firm um, and tough, but also they love playing for him. They they have a lot of fun as well. So. Um, and it's a lot more fun when they're winning too. That's that, that's for sure. But but they um, you know they're they're a group that's really a tight knit group that that really has has developed into a team that that people don't want to play. And and I think that's uh, a tribute to Conzo, the assistance that he has, and and uh, the overall program. In this same building, Robin Pinson's women's team has already won over 20 games, and they are in real good shape. They're still season left here obviously but they're in good shape to potentially host inside Mizzou Arena in the early rounds of the NCAA tournament. What does that mean for a program on the women's side where you have campus sites in the first two rounds to have a chance to host? Yeah I, I think it's really important and, and Robin has continued to build the program and, and it's gotten better every year and I think that, that would be a huge stride to be able to host, to be able to be ranked in the top 16 going into the tournament and and hosting here, it, it's great for the program, it's great for the development of it, and rewards our fans that have been loyal all year and, and, and are continuing to, to build, and we're hoping to set a record this, this weekend with, with Tennessee, and I, I think it, um, it, it could be uh, a really fun atmosphere. It's great for the city of Columbia, great for Missouri to, to have that showcase. So from the program to the university and, and the community, I think it's, it's really a win-win. And I want to remind people, if you're coming to a home basketball game at Mizzou Arena for the Tiger women's team, get your tickets early. You know, don't, don't walk up. You can order online. It's really easy. You avoid the lines on game day, whether you're coming to Tennessee or Vanderbilt, one of the last two home games, and come support those Tigers. Um, I want to ask you about the change at the top of the, the, the softball program that happened right before the start of the season. Uh, Gina Fogue's squad has, has gone on to win a couple of games to, to, to start the year. And why did you feel like Gina was the best fit to, to lead this program this year? Yeah, I, I think she's she's one a player, you know, had great success as a player, uh, been here as an operations person, and then obviously coaching. And so she has a, a great background. Um, and I, I think the team really respects her as, as a person. And I think um, they're, uh, they're at the start of the year, um, along with you know baseball and all our spring, spring sports are just getting started. But, but they uh, they're facing some tough competition. Um, they're very young, but I think uh, they're they're developing into a, a really really good team that could could have postseason uh, play also this year. Playing in the toughest softball conference in the country, they open up their home schedule the first weekend in March. Um, Brian Smith's wrestling team, I mean, what can you say? They just, I mean, they have just blown through this season. They won at Stillwater. They've been in the top five almost all year. What kind of a statement has Tiger Style made this year? 
Yeah, you know, Brian does a great job, and, and obviously it was important to, to keep him last year as people were talking to him, and I think we've, we've got him uh, secured so he, he's not even thinking about going anywhere, and I, I know he, he's not distracted by that at all, and, and so I think he's built a program that, that he's, um, you know, building into legendary status. I think last year when you, when you, um, you graduate a guy that you know three-time national champ, and then you you reload, and and you're you're ranked third in the country. Have a have a chance at at really um, winning a trophy in the national tournament as we as we go down the line. I think that's about the 17th of March or so, and um, hopefully that they can be be on the podium to receive a, a team trophy as well. And I think I know that's what they're shooting for. Um, just you know, do a great job with, with each of the individuals, but then overall as a team, they're a, a formidable opponent. Got a chance to swing by Taylor Stadium recently, and Simmons Field has a new infield with the synthetic turf for the first time. I know that was important to Coach Beezer as, as he builds his program in his second year, and kind of give us a little background what went into that project, and then the outfield is still natural grass, and I know we'd like that to be turf in the future. What can people do to help that down the line? Yeah, great Great question, and, and um, artificial surface, when you're we're more of a northern school, we're out in the northern part of the SEC, and, and a lot of our counterparts are able to practice outside way before we're able to do that, and, and artificial turf gives you an opportunity to level the playing field, and I think that really has helped I, at a previous institution. We put in um, you know, field turf for that, and, and, and it really made a difference, and we're able to, to go to the regionals in baseball, and, and um, play. You can scrape snow off the side of it and, and, and play that day if you, if you want to, and so if the weather's warm enough. But, but it's a, a, a neat opportunity. I, I, I think it, it, uh, the expense was uh, around 400000 and then I think to do the outfield it'll be another million to do all of that. Um, it's amazing how big the outfield is. It covers a lot of space, a lot of acreage. So, um, but I, I think that's what, what, where we're headed and where we want to go with that. But this was a, a first uh, step to getting that done and, and having that infield so that you can play it on every day outside. And, and they've, been, they've been outside most of the time. Even uh, you know, when the weather wasn't great, they were outside. So I, I think that really helps them prepare for the start of the season and gives them a jump. Let's uh, talk about spring football coming up. I know Barry Odom probably has a lot of goals for, for that uh, period of time, had a good signing day. And we can't forget about Drew Locke coming back. And he's such a great representative of this department and, and this school. You know, what does it mean to have him coming back along with virtually the entire team from last year? But Drew there kind of, kind of being that leader that he's grown into the last year or so. Yeah, when you're leading the SEC in touchdown passes, that's a, it's a good recruit to get back. And, and I think it was, it was important for Barry. He, you know, he did his, his best recruiting there and, and, and keeping and retaining those folks to, to come back. And um, I, I think uh, the culture and development of the program, I think it showed this really the second half of the season. You could see it um, internally uh, that, that a lot of good things were going on, um, but they, they matured into a great group, and I think they now with a, a spring practice, I think they start around the 3rd of March or so, and, and they're, they're out there, and, um, and then spring the spring scrimmage is the April 14th, so they get about 15 practices. They get a lot of meetings in between, and I think they can develop and and really prepare for the the, the start of the year, which is coming fast. It's amazing that it's coming that fast. Do you feel like Mizzou football is poised for a breakout year in 2018? Yeah, I think they they have an opportunity to really um, really be successful, and I know their their goal is to win our division, play in the championship game, and win that. And so. Um, if they didn't, then there'd be something wrong. And so I, I think people can, um, uh, people can look forward to a great brand of, of football this fall. You recently had NCAA convention and SEC meetings. Did anything come out of either of those events that uh, really caught your eye? Um, as far as the NCAA, nothing as significant as the time demand legislation like last year. And so, kind of looking at all that, there's a, there's some some things that are um, that are in the hopper. And um, as far as football with or the uh, uh, the eligibility and when when they qualify for a fifth year type of thing, but but. Um, not as significant as that, but I think a lot of things gearing up in the in the future for for the April board of directors meeting and then and then down the road with the NCA convention and 
And then on, on the SEC side, the, this meeting it was one they kind of added um, last year and then are making it a permanent one is more as just focusing on football and everything from um, length of game and how we work with our, our TV partners and speeding it up. And we did speed up some of, some of those games. Um, now when you're passing on every down, it makes it, it lengthens the game a little bit. We had a few of the longest ones um, in the SEC, but, but I, think, um, I, th I think people really don't mind that as much as the delays in looking at replays and so a lot was talked about with the the officials and how they're speeding it up and and speeding up the game so it can move along uh, move along faster so um, they're timing all that we had talked about that we talked about the brand of football um, the the overall brand of the SEC and continuing to build that and, and elevate it and it doesn't get any better when two of your you know your teams are in the championship game and and uh, and the ratings were really really strong across the country and and that was a concern of of, of people and TV of you know what are people going to watch if two SEC teams play well they watched and they watched in a strong strong way and and it was a, a heck of a game so so I think that was really good for the the SEC overall and then we're looking at the the bowl games um, we're in the middle of a cycle and and already looking for that and so um, a lot of things all all things football bowl partners all those those items and and uh, but overall the health is really good and and we've got great partners in the SEC. Jim I'll close with this I was chatting with Brian Smith the other day um, for another couple stories that I was working on with his wrestling team, but we just got to talking about the momentum in this department right now, and you know, kind of starting with the football team's winning streak in the fall, and and you know, these these coaches talk to each other, these student athletes talk to each other, you know, athletes from different sports are friends with one another. Do, do you feel like there's been some carryover that that's kind of really built over the last six to, to ten months in this department that that's really got things moving for everybody not just football yeah I, I think you you know uh, in the department we can feel it and and there's great momentum and I, I think we have a lot of good good things going on and it's because of those leaders of those those programs those those people really set help set the tone and I think they they care about each other. They're, uh, they care about the student athletes. Care about each other, and it's it's great in the matsy that they get a mix, and and you know when they're they're going for their meals, and and that that's a great mixing and melting pot over there. Um, so I think that you know our culture, and we we want to we want to do things right. We want to win it right. We're going to compete for championships, but we're going to show respect and have integrity. And and I'm excited about the the future of Mizzou athletics. We look forward to a very busy and exciting spring. We'll talk with you more as we go along, and thanks for your time here this month. Thanks, Ben. That is Mizzou Athletic Director Jim Sterk going inside the huddle.